Midnight, not far from city life, in the forest under the stars, a battle was being fought. The stars shone so brightly that silhouettes could be clearly seen, but the young man was wounded by a sword under the rib. Red blood flew from his mouth and he screamed in pain. He crouched on his right knee, holding his mighty sword. Although he tried to hold back his emotions, his face showed how strong the pain from the sword wound was. Under the starlight, the boy saw a group of people in front of him. They were wearing masks, but he could clearly see their intentions in their eyes. The forces were not equal, but the young man did not retreat. From this circle of warriors came threats against the lonely boy. He was told to just surrender and die, he was called a young cult leader. The young man was still sitting on the ground, blood dripping from his chin. Holding the sword in his right hand and holding on to the wound with his left, he died with a smile on his face. The lone boy raised his head and turned to his abusers. He said that of course he knew there was an evil force that wanted to kill him, but he didn't think it would be these people. The young man knew these people. It was a squad of evil blood, they spent a lot of time side by side. And now they want to end him. One of the soldiers of the squad slowly removed her mask so that the young man could see her face. He did not have time to see her face in full, but he already understood why she was doing it. The girl was the leader of the squad. She told the boy that the current demonic cult needed serious changes. Her face radiating seriousness, she continued by saying that for the sake of this change, they, the vicious blood squad, decided to kill the boy despite all the bitterness in their hearts. The boy sighed, he knew that this was just a contrived circumstance in order to kill him. He said he didn't like change, and that even swearing allegiance to the Fellblood squad was worth nothing in the face of death. The young warrior raised her sword above her head with a loud sound. She had only one goal from which she was going nowhere, so she told the boy to think as he wanted. The entire unit of vicious blood, led by a girl, stood over a lone boy. The sword in the hands of the leader looked powerful, its glow from the full moon reflected in the young man's face. He could clearly see his reflection in it. His hair and cloak billowed in the wind. He still sat motionless and waited. The boy raised his eyes and looked at the squad of evil blood standing in front of him. Drops of sweat dripped from his face from the pain. His face radiated confidence, and he scornfully asked if he was really going to die. Without waiting for an answer, the boy said no. With a hiss, he took his mighty-looking sword out of the ground. Under the influence of all factors, the pain left him for a moment. His body moved and his legs carried him forward towards the enemy. He announced that the leader of the demonic cult was his father. The young man's aura radiated confidence and anger towards the offenders, he was clearly not going to die. He was going to show that the apple does not fall far from the apple tree and that he is worthy of his father's honor. A seventeen-year-old boy shouted aloud that he was Chion Vobek is a young leader of a demonic cult. Sweat still dripped from his face, but he tried his best not to feel pain. He was ready to fight the enemy, saying that now everything will be, let's attack. But before he could prove his speech, a man fell on him like thunder from the sky. He hit the warrior right in the face with his soft heel, so unexpectedly that the relaxed bones in his neck went at the seams. The young man was shocked by the unexpected attack of the man and they both ended up on the ground. They fell with such a crash that it seems both might have died. The man who attacked the young man half stood up and writhed in pain. He complained about the pain in his back, which was the culprit of this event. Having moved away a little from the pain, and from what happened, the man raised his eyes. He saw people in front of him, dressed not quite traditionally and wondered where he was and where he got to. An industrialized city, a beautiful day, a university. A young man studied at this pedagogical university for four years. In addition to studying at the institute, he spent two years in military service far from this city. He did not know why, but he passed. For two years, the man was preparing for the certification exam for teachers. He sat in the evenings, and even at night, even though he didn't want to, to get this certificate. And finally he did it. At the age of 28, he has achieved something. He mentally shouts that he is now Kim Sejun, who has passed the teacher certification exam. Of course, he understood that this would not be a wow event for him. 
He hadn't wanted to study all these years, so he felt relieved now. The only thing he wanted was money. In such times, about all that the majority of the population of this rather small town wants is a stable and high income. The city was really big, the skyscrapers almost blocked the view of the sky, but it was worth it, since these buildings had excellent living conditions. But the man wondered what he should do to live here, because now housing prices are growing faster than salaries. Of course, earnings are not limited to regular work. Now is the age of gadgets and, fortunately, people don't have to die. The man thought about how to increase the profit by hundreds or even thousands of times. He came to the conclusion that now it is quite real and there are ways that will help him do it. In the internet era, shares and crypto became a popular way of earning an additional income. Previously, people could not even dream of passive income from anywhere, but now it is available to everyone. The man looked at his total assets and turned a little pale. He was standing in the school bus parking lot, silently looking at his phone. His account had a figure with a minus of nine zeros. Somewhere deep in his soul, he cried and cursed himself, repeating the phrase that all assets simply evaporated. The building is red in the best Chinese tradition. It looked very massive, especially against the background of the trees growing at the foot of its foundation. School buses with wide black rims on wheels, polished to a shine, were about to leave. Cheerful school life was boiling in front of the buses. There was a commotion from all sides, everyone was talking about their problems and news. The students were waiting for the trip. The teacher in a pink dress gave the command to line up. She tried to scream as loud as possible for everyone to hear. After that, she said in a less loud voice that it was time to go inside the royal tomb. The teacher was not coping, the children did not hear her or did not want to hear her. She looked in the direction of the man who was standing with the phone in his hands. He looked upset and very angry. In an embarrassed voice, the woman addressed the man by name. She did not want to make him even more angry, so in the most quiet and pleasant tone she asked him to look for the children. She was sick, so she could not group the students and asked for help. As soon as she did it, fear and misunderstanding appeared on her face. The man stood motionless, although his face was hidden behind his hair, hatred could be seen on it. In his head, he was still berating himself for what had happened. He could not believe that his assets had been burned. And now the teacher reminded him that he was also a teacher he did not want to work as. She turned to him again, but the man could not think about anything else. The teacher still managed to attract the attention of the students. They lined up and the teacher gave the command to follow her, showing the appropriate hand gesture. Teacher Sojin was still standing disfigured. Here it is, the exhibition of the royal tomb. They finally got here. The door to the building looked tempting, I wanted to go in there and look at everything, but not teacher Sojin. He entered the door with the whole group and another teacher, but he didn't want anything anymore. He said in his mind that there is no more meaning in his life. While all the students were looking at the exhibits, teacher Sojun just stood there looking at his phone. He finally came back to reality, but even here he was not feeling well. He had to look after the students, which he didn't want to do. Teacher Seo Jun wanted to leave this room for a few minutes and go outside to get some fresh air. But he was stopped by a sound from a nearby entrance. The teacher looked there with tension. Outsiders could not enter. He opened the door and went inside with a look around. The student closed the door behind him, hoping that no one had seen or heard him. It was written on the door that you cannot enter here. But it did not stop him. The teacher was in a misunderstanding. He could not make out the young man's face in the darkness, but he saw his uniform and concluded that he must have been a student from their school. He was not feeling well anyway, he stood against the background of the shadows of the exhibits and thought about the fact that he definitely does not have enough of these problems. He exhaled, and thought with a bit of mockery that no one would deceive him again. He changed his expression. After standing for just a couple of seconds, Putting on his black sneakers that fit under his white socks, the teacher decided to go after the student. He passed through the same forbidden ribbon that the schoolboy crossed, and cursed the high school students who do not allow him to even grieve in peace. Teacher Seo Jun opened the door and the student entered. The door was not very new, it opened with a creak, and this alarmed the teacher a little. 
Entering the secret room, the teacher was speechless. Drops of sweat appeared on his face, he stood with his eyes and mouth wide open. The mystery room looked old and unkempt. The web was almost everywhere. Cracks in the floor, creepers entwined around ancient columns. Only modern lamps could bring the teacher back to reality. Sejun stood in complete shock. There were many questions in his head. It was written on his face that he hated being in this place. He glanced at one of the ancient columns. It was completely cracked, it is not clear how it held on. In the upper corner, under the base of the column, a web hung. Next, a lamp caught his eye, which also had a cobweb hanging from it. It seemed that it was a combination of the past and the future. Master Sojin wondered with a drink if there really was such a place in the royal tomb. At last his gaze caught the fugitive. He saw him at the moment when he was going behind the last column. Next was another corridor with creepy columns. The teacher rushed to catch up with the disobedient student, only a deaf person would not have heard his footsteps. He ran as fast as he could. Having caught up with the students, the teacher grabbed him by the shoulder. He was very angry with him, so he shouted at him words that not everyone would like to hear. He caught him right in the middle of the corridor. Having calmed down a little, teacher Sojin told the student that you can't come here whenever you want. The student felt the teacher's touch on him and was a little scared. He slowly turned his face toward Seo Jun. A drop of sweat ran down his face. He asked with surprise if it was really teacher Sejun. Out of fear, he introduced himself as Yudokwa from class 2B. The teacher was in a misunderstanding. He asked the student's name. Not letting go of his shoulder, he wondered why such a quiet and obedient student would do such a thing. Yudoa looked at the teacher and said that he had better hurry up and get out of here as soon as possible. Sejun was still mad at the student and didn't understand what he was talking about. The student continued the conversation and pointed to the building. He said that if the teacher stayed here with him, he would be heavily cursed. Seo Jun still didn't understand anything and looked at the student with a smile. He exhaled, shook his head and called the student a jerk for his incomprehensible words. In with anger in his words, he asked him if that was all he had enough for. The teacher did not believe in any curse and asked the student again. He ordered him to get out of here, so that there would not be. While the teacher and student continued their not very friendly conversation, the wall opposite them cracked. Gold poured down the river from there. It filled literally half the corridor where you and Sojin were standing. His tinkling echoed throughout the corridor. There was so much of it that you couldn't even count how much it would cost just by looking at it. The teacher broke into a sweat again, but not from fear or anger, but from surprise. He did not understand what was happening here and what the hell gold was pouring from the wall. His mouth was open in astonishment, and drops of sweat were running down his chin. Only one phrase came out of his mouth, were they really gold coins? Calming down a little, he covered his mouth. The teacher made a thoughtful sound and shook his head. He forgot everything that happened to him and what the boy said to him before that. Seo Jun decided to check everything with his own eyes and headed to the pile of gold. Yu remained standing still and silently watched what the teacher was doing. He reached the pile of gold and decided to test it in the standard way. He took one of the gold coins to his mouth and bit it. The sound was ringing and loud. The teacher was even more surprised than before. The coins really turned out to be gold. He stood looking at this whole pile of gold. Yudoa slowly approached the teacher and sat down to feel the gold himself. He also took one gold coin and began to examine it carefully. He looked at her very carefully and did not give in to emotions like his teacher. His face was more serious than Sejun S before. His eyes were not exposed to the bright light of the gold coins. You took a closer look. He suspected that these could not be simple gold coins in such a city. You saw evil spirits around the coin. As soon as he did, his eyes widened in fear and he concluded that he had thought correctly. You said that these coins were inhabited by evil spirits. But while the student was in fear of his thoughts, the teacher did not care at all. He stood over that pile of gold and smiled. You looked at him cautiously. Sejun laughed loudly with joy. You thought for a moment that he had gone mad. 
His eyes were large, his mouth was wide open, and sweat began to trickle down his face again. There was only one thing on his mind now. He saw before his eyes his profit of minus nine zeros, and still laughed at his problem. Now he won't have to do anything. Seo Jun picked up one of the gold coins again. He was very happy and said that mobility in society can only be dreamed of. When such a treasure fell upon him, thoughts about the stock and the crypt came back to him. He said that these are the only things that can change mobility in society, putting a coin in a pocket. Unbuttoning the lock on his jacket, he said that when he lost all his financial savings on crypto and stocks, he thought he was cursed. Sejun no longer felt angry and insecure. He, with a feeling of strength and confidence, took off his jacket. He knew exactly what he would do next. He took the jacket in two hands, tied a couple of knots on it and made a bag out of it. It was his only option to get more gold out of here. He stood over a pile of gold, satisfied. He knew that this was a chance that life had given him, that all his financial expenses and sufferings were not in vain. His face did not leave a hideous smile that radiated confidence. He did not consider himself an idiot to miss this chance. Therefore, he was as determined and ready for action as possible. He knelt down and began stuffing the gold coins into his jacket. No words, only the clink of coins could be heard all around. You stood and watched this for a while, the student knew that it would not lead to anything good. He was surprised by the arrogance and greed of his teacher. Exhaling slowly, he told the teacher that he would be cursed at this rate. Sojin at all. He continued to shovel gold into his homemade bag faster and faster and said that his life was already like pure hell. Filling his bag with gold, Master Sojin said that no curse could exist. For him, the world without money did not exist, so he sneezed at the curse. Under his legs began to crack the floor Sojin, who does not believe in anything, did not even pay attention to such a phenomenon from the beginning. The floor continued to collapse with loud noises and great speed. And the already greedy teacher could not help but pay attention to this. He raised his eyes and looked at you for a moment. There was fear and misunderstanding in his eyes. You looked back at him, their eyes met for just a moment, but they managed to see the fear in each other's eyes. And with an even bigger roar than before, the floor fell down. You and Sojin fell right there with all their gold. The teacher thought it was some kind of joke until the end. His face showed it as accurately as possible. He didn't think the curse would overtake him so quickly. They were falling down almost as fast as Sejun was shoveling gold into his bag. Darkness engulfed their bodies with every passing second. When Sojin fell, he no longer saw you. He heard some strange voices and could not understand anything. A voice in this cave said that whoever disturbed the peace of the king deserved a curse. While Sejun was flying, he also heard that he would have to go through many trials and live among the dead for the rest of his days. He looked at his hand which he could not control. She shook in the air under the pressure. Seo Jun didn't want to die and so he screamed loudly out of hopelessness. Under the force of atmospheric pressure, tears began to appear on his face. Tears flowed from his eyes and he did not know what was waiting for him. He saw a sign in front of him that said he had awakened as a player. After some time, many more signs appeared that said that he is really in the game. One of them stated that he would be able to summon his first skeleton after killing an enemy. Seo Jun didn't understand what was happening, he thought he was hallucinating before his death. It landed right on Chong's head Vobek, a young leader of a demonic cult, who was just about to give battle to a squad of vicious blood. They both fell to the ground. Sejun held his butt and did not hold back his emotions and pain from the fall. He still didn't quite understand where he was or where he would be in the next moment. Having moved a little away from the fall, he felt some discomfort and looked at his pants. Sejun was very surprised because they were too spacious. He didn't understand anything anymore. He scanned the other parts of his body and realized that his hands had also shrunk. He felt as if freer, but at the same time very tense. The expression on his face conveyed fear and incomprehension. Seo Jun sat with gritted teeth, sweat starting to drip from his face again. He brought both of his hands closer to his face, looked at them, and with his mouth wide open, he assumed that he had become many years younger. 
When Sejun was slightly distracted from his body and the emotions he had just felt, he raised his head and looked in front of him. He could not say anything because of surprise. In front of him stood people in incomprehensible costumes and weapons in their hands. Sia Jun took a quick look at their costumes and assumed it was some kind of funny masquerade. Their faces also seemed a bit unusual to Sia Jun. He was not used to seeing such faces in front of him every day, so his surprise knew no bounds. Sia Jun was still sitting on the floor next to the dead young demonic cult leader. He had no idea that this man had died from his unexpected attack. A squad of vicious blood stood over the two young men. They had already realized that the 17-year-old young leader of the demonic cult, Chion Vobek, dead. Sejun looked more closely at the dead warrior. His eyes widened, his eyebrows went up, and only one question arose in his mind. The young leader's neck was turned 90 degrees, his mouth was foaming, his eyes were staring into the void. Sejun's voice was uncertain and shaky. He looked closer and closer at the dead man's body. Sejun's demeanor changed dramatically. The features of his face became more clear and distinct, but the sweat still dripped from it. He finally began to understand something. He completed his first task in this game, he killed a young leader of a demonic cult. Sejun finally understood, his first condition was fulfilled. He looked once more at the young man he had just killed with his ass. A cursor was placed on his face and Sojin was offered to summon his body as a skeleton. Sejun almost jumped out of his skin from this turn of events. He turned very pale and could only scream deep in his heart at the moment. A sharp and resounding sound of a sword was heard behind him. Unbeknownst to him, Sejun was able to hear the approaching weapon. Seo Jun quickly cast his gaze there. The only thing he saw at that moment was the glow of a powerful weapon. By some miracle, he managed to evade the attack of the leader of the vicious blood unit. Seo Jun screamed loudly and couldn't even think at that moment. Dodging the attack, the man faced his attackers. From their mouths came the phrase that witnesses cannot be left here. Their swords were aimed straight at Sojin. The leader of the vicious blood squad was serious, only her face could be seen. She ordered to kill the man who saw everything with his own eyes. The squad agreed with the leader. Seo Jun heard everything and asked himself what that woman said. He gritted his teeth and asked himself once again if they really wanted to kill him. After waiting a couple of seconds and looking at the faces of the people from the vicious blood squad, Sejun realized that he was indeed going to be killed. Anger shone from his face. Sejun didn't have much time to think. He looked again at the dead man beside him and concluded that he was their ally and that they wanted revenge for him. The man was 100% sure that it was so. He hastily tried to settle his guilt, explaining everything by the fact that he was here for nothing, he simply fell from the sky. But the next blood unit did not want to listen to the killer. They rushed at him with swords and loud noises that wanted him to die. Words were powerless in this situation. Sojin rushed to flee with all his might, because he could not fight off such a large number of fighters. At high speed, he tripped over his own leg. The man fell to the floor with a loud crash. It didn't hurt as much when he landed on the young leader's face with his butt, but it was still unpleasant. Not even having time to wake up, Sojin felt a wound in his shoulder. The leader of the foul blood squad pierced his right shoulder with her sword. The man's eyes filled with bitter tears. Above him stood a whole squad of professional warriors, a sword sticking out of his shoulder. All he could do was scream loudly. His cry echoed throughout the valley. The squad leader said she would grant him a quick death in exchange for helping them finish their job. Sejun didn't understand what she was talking about, because she had just stabbed him with a sword, what kind of award could she be talking about? When the woman finished her speech, the man again felt pain in his shoulder. Even this pain could not compare even with the fall on the young leader. It was very painful. Somewhere deep in his soul he experienced this pain with complaints and no words could silence it. He was lying on his stomach, clenching his teeth tightly. Bitter tears flowed from his face, he believed that he would soon die, as it was impossible to survive such an injury. Sojin didn't want to die so miserably, in some distant forest, among people he doesn't know. His whole life flashed before his eyes. 
He recalled how he went through military service, how he studied at the university and how happy he was when he did receive a certificate. Drops of tears from his eyes fell directly on his palm. Sejun could hear these sounds, but they only depressed him more. He was very angry with himself, looked at his hand, at the tears falling on it, and realized that he had not even spent the gold that fell on his head, but was already dying. Before he could completely despair, a new game board appeared before Sojin's eyes. For a moment, the man even forgot about the pain in his shoulder. A drop of hope appeared in his eyes. He looked at this tablet with tears in his eyes and tried to read something that would somehow save him. The sign said that he could summon his first skeleton warrior. While Sejun's eyes pondered over these words, at the end the question arose as to whether he wanted to do it. Sejun didn't know what to do. Usually, at such moments, he is used to thinking, pondering such incomprehensible decisions for a long time. But there was no time to worry about his property and his future. So in a moment of desperation, Seo Jun decided to take advantage of the opportunity he was given. The man shouted loudly to the entire valley, summoning his skeleton. He didn't know if it would save him, but he had no other choice. After Sejun's words, there was a big explosion. His wave was so strong that it pushed the entire vicious blood squad back a couple of meters. The soldiers did not understand what was happening. They were forced to cover their faces from the light so as not to be blinded. An unknown force informed Sejun that he had summoned his first skeleton warrior. He was also informed that a skeleton can use its skills from a past life and can share some of them with its summoner. It was as if all his strength had been taken away from Sojin. His head was spinning from the plates that had just appeared in front of him. But he had not lost his sight, as he had thought from the beginning. He raised his eyes and looked at the place where he had summoned his first skeleton. What she saw left the leader of the squad speechless. She looked in front of her and could not believe that this was possible. In front of her stood the young leader of the demonic cult. His demonic figure radiated a purple aura that frightened all the warriors. The entire squad of vicious blood was in complete shock. They thought that it was impossible, because his neck was broken, and he had already been in the other world for a long time. The young leader of the demonic cult did not look very good. He did not lift his head up, he loudly spat blood. Blood dripped from his mouth not in drops but in whole clots. It flowed down his body and reached his very feet. The sounds from this were not the most pleasant. The detractors of the young leader stood in complete shock, they were both frightened and surprised. Drops of sweat began to appear on the face of the squad leader. His silhouette looked powerful. He finally raised his head and the squad of vicious blood could see his face. It was a skull with no skin, just bones and eyes. He opened his cloak, which began to develop under the force of the wind. The young leader shouted with all his might, showing his readiness to fight the enemies. All emotions except fear disappeared from the faces of the soldiers of the vicious blood squad. They looked at each other and did not know what would happen next. One of the warriors decided that the current leader had not fully recovered from his death and decided to attack him from the very beginning. He grabbed his sword with both hands and ran at the skeleton with loud screams. The leader understood that he would not overcome him and tried to stop him. She shouted after her ward to stop, but he did not listen to her. The young leader drew his sword at the speed of light and sliced his attacker in half. The sound was loud enough for the rest of the squad to hear. There were no emotions on the face of the skeleton, he stood motionless in the place where he killed the warrior and stared into the void. Instead, all the warriors of the vicious blood squad stood with their eyes wide open and watched the events. They were shocked by the force of the young leader's sword strike. Sojin just lay on the ground and watched the skeleton he summoned. The young leader's skeleton was standing next to Sejun's body and protecting him. The man was in awe of the power possessed by the young leader of the demonic cult. Now positive emotions appeared on his face. A sign appeared before the man's eyes again, saying that he had successfully summoned his first skeleton warrior and that he was completely under his control. Seo Jun stared at the inscription with wide eyes. He still did not understand everything to the end and tried to consider and examine everything in more detail. A bright thought appeared in the man's head. He realized that this skeleton of a young leader now obeys him completely and will do what he says. 
A hysterical laugh came from his mouth, which said that the man was satisfied with the result. He felt power in his hands. Sejun's shoulder still hurt badly, but he found the strength to get up. He felt that now everything was too much for him. Fully lifting himself off the ground and standing on his feet at full height, Sejun was still holding on to his injured shoulder. He stood behind the young leader's skeleton. His shoulder hurt a lot, but he found the strength to give orders. Suffering from pain in his shoulder, he decided to give the first order to the young leader. Bloody tears were visible in his eyes, his hair was blowing in the wind. He ordered the young leader to kill everyone but one who dared to attempt his death. Elementary school. Children who are motivated to learn acquire their knowledge here. They all have different ideas about their future, but one goal is to gain knowledge. A young man studied in one of these classes. He had recently entered this school and now he needed to introduce himself to the class. The boy got up from behind his desk with a piece of paper and greeted everyone. His name was Sojin. Everyone was looking forward to his further story. The young man began his story with what he dreams about. His eyes shone, it was clear from them that he would one day achieve what he wanted. His only dream was to be rich. This dream has haunted Sojin since childhood. He always dreamed of being better than everyone else, of being richer, so that he had enough for all his needs, so that he could spend money wherever he wanted. To make his dream come true, the young man worked very hard. He sat at his desk in the evenings and studied. He believed that this knowledge would one day bring him a lot of money. He worked almost non-stop. One evening his nose bled from overwork. His cells could not withstand the constant stress of sitting on a chair. But the boy did not stop at anything. He silently wiped the blood from his nose with a white handkerchief and continued to work hard. Now, in Sojin's imagination was the gold that fell on his head. He once wanted to have millions and billions on his cards, and this is not how he imagined his wealth. But money is still money. Seo Jun remembered sitting over that pile of gold and being overjoyed at this turn of events. But not everything always goes according to plan. Seo Jun knew that, but he couldn't think of anything else at that moment. And when his dream almost became a reality, another defeat awaited him. It was quiet in the valley below the mountain. The starlight covered the entire space around with its light. The clouds floated quietly across the sky. But an unknown explosion disturbed the worldwide silence. Somewhere right under the mountain, traces of a purple explosion were visible, emitting a lot of energy. This energy would be enough to illuminate a very large city. With every second, the glow became more and more, and everything around seemed to be drowned in this glow. All this energy was splashed out by the skeleton of the young leader of the demonic cult. The soldiers of the vicious blood squad standing opposite could not see anything. All they saw in front of them was a purple glow and the skeleton of the young leader emitting it. The ground under their feet shook and pieces of it flew straight into their faces. He was getting stronger. On his skinless face you could see the intense pain from such a process. The soldiers of the disruptive blood squad could do about it. They just stood there in silence and looked at it with wide open eyes filled with fear. The young leader of the demonic cult held his mighty sword firmly in his right hand. It radiated the same purple energy as the skeleton itself. He rushed at his enemies with a wide swing of his sword. He moved so fast that a strong wind rose from his movements. He let out a very loud cry. His face in Russia seemed even more dynamic and angry. Sparks blazed in his eyes, his black cloak almost flying off his skeleton. The warriors of the vicious blood squad did not have time to prepare for such an attack. The young leader cut his first enemy with his sword with all his might. Only now did the squad soldiers realize that the young leader's attack had begun. All they noticed was the blood that immediately poured out of their comrade in a river. The warrior standing right behind his stricken comrade looked frightened. His eyes widened in fear and all he could do was hold on to his weapon and wait for the attack. He could not keep up with the young leader's attack. Drops of sweat dripped from his face from worry and fear. He did not know when death would overtake him. This moment came much faster than he imagined. Before the warrior even blinked, the skeletal figure of the young leader with a sword above his head was already standing in front of him.
he killed him with that mighty sword in front of the other soldiers of the nearby blood unit. They could not stop him as he was too fast and cut his enemies with the speed and sound of light. The squad leader was displeased with the bloodshed of her comrades. Although she did not understand what was happening, she tried to keep herself in her hands. Standing surrounded by her comrades, she told them not to panic. The main task for her was not to panic, but to prepare for the attack. Sejun stood aside, holding his shoulder and silently watched the events that happened every second. He did not understand what was happening here, and with this misunderstanding in his eyes, he simply stood in his place. Beads of sweat were still running down his face. From the lips of the leader of the vicious blood squad, the phrase sounded that the leader was still standing before them, albeit in the form of a skeleton. She said he wouldn't be able to move if all his limbs were cut off. Sejun was not joking. He was waiting for what will happen now. The leader ordered her soldiers to attack without fear. She shouted that a skeleton cannot have energy inside and can only swing a sword left and right. Sejun became even more wary. It grew bigger and bigger, its mouth opened wider. He only heard around him terms of internal energy, sword technique and combat stance. From the very beginning, the man could not understand anything. Sejun stood there gritting his teeth and trying to figure out where he had gotten to. From his lips came the phrase that it would be better for him not to understand anything in the future. He was standing behind the young leader's skeleton and a thought came to him. He didn't want to admit it, but he understood that he was in the world of martial arts. The young demonic cult leader's skeleton paused for a moment. His mouth was open and steam was coming out. Steam began to emanate from his entire body and take on the appearance of purple energy. There was a spark in his eyes again and he was ready to attack. The warriors of the vicious blood squad held their swords firmly in their hands with both hands and watched as the skeleton of the young leader reincarnated. Their bodies trembled at what they saw, and their eyes showed nothing but fear and nothing else. They knew they had to defeat him, but they couldn't help themselves. The squad leader was not affected by fear. She looked at her brothers who were trembling and tried to encourage them with words, but they did not respond. She decided to act alone. She started from her place with great speed, ordering her to give way and not to interfere. She moved towards the young leader very quickly and confidently. There was not a drop of fear in her movements. Approaching the immobile figure of a skeleton, she shouted that she would cut off the head of the young leader herself. Her face yearned for revenge for the killed comrades. She, with screams on her face, was ready to impress the young leader. She happily swung her sword to strike the young leader's skeleton. But he had other plans. With a light movement of his sword, he blocked the strike of the squad leader. The girl was surprised at the speed of the young leader's movements. Her face showed hopelessness, but she still had hoped to win. Their swords collided in a blow. The girl saw this picture in front of her and felt weak. The forces were unequal, but she did not want to give up. She unsheathed her sword. The leader was preparing for the next attack to hit the young leader of the demonic cult at another point. She swung her sword with all her might to cut off the skeleton's arm. But the young leader managed to block even this unexpected blow. The leader was shocked by such speed. Her face no longer looked as confident as it had during the first attack and her body began to shake. Her body stopped obeying from this collision. Her right leg floated forward under the pressure of the young leader's powerful sword force. With a loud whistle, the young leader of the demonic cult drew his sword towards him, taking with him the sword of the leader of the vicious blood unit. His speed was impressive. The girl did not have time to follow his movements and only saw the glare of their swords. The young leader made his movements graceful, fast and very dangerous. The girl recognized these movements. From that moment on, she began to suspect what was waiting for her. The composition of the young leader became faster. No one could keep up with his movements. The leader of the vicious blood unit was only able to see his last movement. The young leader's skeleton was approaching the girl's flesh. He was going to end the fight with his attack. The mighty sword of the young leader ended up right under her rib. The young leader completed his attack, and the girl realized it at the very last moment. All she was able to say was one phrase at the end of this fight. 
Blood had already appeared on her lips and she said that it was the martial art of the young leader. The squad leader was defeated. She fell to the ground from a powerful blow to the rib by the young leader's sword and could no longer get up. The skeleton of the young leader of the demonic clan stood over the woman's body and prepared for the next attack. His eyes shone even brighter and radiated even more fear. The violet aura seemed to be trying to break out and show its strength. The warriors of the vicious blood squad were standing across from the battlefield that had just ended. Their eyes were still scared, but now also amazed by what they saw. Having just realized that the skeleton of the young leader of the demonic clan killed their leader, anger appeared in their eyes towards him. Their bodies were no longer shaking from fear, but from anger. One of the warriors shouted, urging the rest to attack with him. There was no doubt in anyone's mind what they needed to do. All the warriors of the vicious blood unit as one rushed to attack the young leader. They were fast and very angry, they shouted that they wanted to kill him, but the skeleton did not move. As soon as the warriors landed next to the young leader with swords above their heads, some of them were instantly killed. None of them could have guessed such a schedule of events. Taking advantage of the fact that the young leader was distracted by his brothers, one of the warriors took advantage of his weakness. He carried his attack as hard as he could. His sword stuck straight into the back of the young leader's skeleton. The blow was strong and precise. The young leader definitely could not survive after that. The vicious blood squad warrior was satisfied with his attack. He knew that he had hit the point where no one could survive. He looked at the skeleton's head. The young leader stood motionless as if the attack had passed him by. The purple aura around him disappeared. The warrior of the vicious blood unit hoped that the skeleton of the young leader would now fall and not stand up. But his body stirred and he quickly turned his head towards the enemy. The warrior was amazed, he saw directly in front of him the face of the young leader's skeleton and was greatly surprised and frightened. The young leader struck his offender with his sword. His blood spilled on the ground. Another martial art of the young leader was immortality. But the soldiers of the vicious blood squad did not have time to understand this yet. Another soldier of the squad plunged his sword into the stomach of the young leader. But it had no effect on the young leader. He struck another of his enemies with his sword. Blood was spilled again. The warriors of the vicious blood squad still had hope for the death of the young demonic cult leader. One of them hit the young leader again with his sword. Another warrior noticed this and decided to deal a fatal blow to the young leader. Two swords were already sticking out of the young leader's skeletal body, but their attack was in vain. The skeleton of the young leader stirred again and fought back against his attackers. Against the skeleton of the young leader who rose from the dead, not a single attack by the warriors of the vicious blood squad was successful. The young leader took out the swords with which he had just been struck. With a loud thud, he threw them to the ground. Sojin stood behind the young leader and watched all of this. He understood that he was in the world of martial arts, but beyond that he could not understand anything else. Seeing what the skeleton warrior he summoned had done, Sojin broke into a sweat. He gritted his teeth and tried to say something, but he couldn't because he still hadn't moved on from the events that had just happened. In front of the man stood the skeleton of a young leader of a demonic cult and dozens of corpses of warriors that he had just killed single-handedly lay. A purple aura was still swirling around the skeleton's body. He let out a truly demonic laugh that took Sejun's breath away. The man once again looked at the ground where dozens of corpses of soldiers lay. Some of them had their eyes open and it looked very creepy. Sojin had no face at that moment. His thoughts were clouded and he did not understand what he had just done. In his mind flashed the moment when he ordered the skeleton warrior to kill every one of them. It was the first time he had seen such carnage with his own eyes. He felt uncomfortable when he caught himself thinking this. He lowered his head and was consumed by doubts as to whether he had done the right thing. Sejun came to the conclusion that he had no other choice, because that would kill him. When the man moved a little away from what had happened, his shoulder began to ache excruciatingly. The pain was so strong that he could not bear it anymore. He stood in the middle of the dead bodies lying on the ground and screamed in pain. He needed to get out of here and he wondered if there was anyone alive left here. Sojin's eye. He looked away and was very surprised by what he saw. 
There lay his bag of gold, which Seo Jun was about to forget and thought he would never see again. He remembered how he had made it out of his jacket in that corridor and had collected many gold coins from it. It was really his bag of money. Sejun walked over to his bag. He felt relief in his soul, because for the sake of this bag he wanted to survive in this situation. He had already forgotten about the bag and did not think that he would return to it. The man tightly tied the bag with money. His shoulder still hurt and he sighed in pain. In addition, all these events tired him very much. The bag was lying right under the river that flowed down the mountain. Sia Jun didn't even notice her behind his gold at first, but now he decided to look at himself in the reflection. The display was blurry. At first, Seo Jun couldn't take a closer look at his face, the waves that flowed very quickly hindered him. After catching his breath a bit, Sejun was still able to clearly see his reflection in the water. And he understood that from the very beginning, when he got here, he was not mistaken. He saw his young self in the reflection. He really got younger and couldn't believe it. He just sat under the river for a while with a thoughtful face. There was fog over the river. It was a deep night and the moon allowed Sojin to see his face in the water again and again. Sejun thought about whether he wanted to look young. But you won't do anything. Hysterical laughter came from his mouth. He absolutely did not care if he was young or not, the main thing was that his money returned to him. He did not know what world he was in, but money was the main thing for him, so he was not disappointed. Seo Jun believed that as long as he had money, he could survive in any world. Even if it was hell, he didn't care. He took his bag, rose to his feet and prepared to leave. His golden find even covered the unbearable pain in his shoulders. Under the guidance of the full moon, Sojin, with a bag of gold on his shoulder, set out on the road. Behind him lay dozens of corpses, which at first wanted to kill him, but then went to the other world themselves. Plains and mountains lay in the middle of a deep and dense fog. The bumps on the ground have long been overgrown with moss, no one has been here for a long time. The demonic cult's majestic royal pavilion stood under the scorching sun. There was not a single cloud in the sky that would prevent viewing this palace under the sun. The king had a guest today. He stood before him, bent on one knee. The king sat motionless on his throne, which could be reached by stairs. The king's face was not very pleased. He sat silently for some time and looked at the guest whom he invited to his room. The king told his guest that the squad of evil blood had been killed. His voice was as calm as possible, but you could hear notes of sadness in it. The guest who visited the king still sat motionless on one knee. He looked at the floor and did not dare to raise his eyes to look at the king who was sitting above him. He was wearing a black cloak with a hood. His hair was visible from under the hood, behind which his eyes were hidden. With a cheeky grin on his face, the guest said he knew what the king was saying. Hearing his guest's answer, the king thought for a moment. The shortest possible laugh came from his mouth. After some time, the king laughed so loudly that his whole palace could be heard. His hysterical laughter meant mocking the death of these people. The royal guest felt a little embarrassed in such an atmosphere. But he was very interested in what caused such a laugh of the king. The king stood up from his majestic throne and his majesty ordered the guest and you to the central plains with a powerful voice. His figure looked no less majestic than his throne. His eyes glowed for some unknown reason. The guest agreed to the king's order and finally showed his eyes. They were bright purple in color and exuded cunning and confidence at the same time. The place is far from the mountains. Quiet and urban life reigns here. In the evening city, the buildings in which people rested glowed. One of these places was an inn called Eastern Lake, located in the very center of the town. A very cozy and pleasant-looking place with tables in the yard. On the first the atmosphere of a pub reigned on the floor of the inn. Waiters distributed orders, people came and left. An old man sipped his drink. He had a long unkempt mustache and a beard that was hard to call a beard. He was sitting at the same table with his acquaintance, with whom they were vacationing together. After finishing his glass, the man shouted with joy. His friend, sitting across from him at the table, was surprised by his friend's good mood. With a faint smile on his face, he asked why he was in such a good mood. 
The man with the mustache replied that the good mood came to him by itself. Holding a glass for a drink, he added that he realized how much fun life is. His friend was very surprised by such words, because he always heard from his friend only complaints about boredom. They were sitting at the central table in the middle of the hall. The man with the mustache asked his friend if the rumors had reached him yet. He continued without waiting for an answer from his friend opposite. His conversation consisted of the fact that people say that some new holy star has appeared. The comrade asked if he meant the sword of the small moon storm is edge again. The man with the mustache didn't like his friend talking so loudly, because it was a long forgotten past. The inn, as usual, had two floors. People who traveled or decided to stay there lived there. A completely different atmosphere reigned on the second floor. Although the shouts of the visitors could be heard there, it was still quiet and peaceful here. A door creaked open in one of the rooms on the second floor. A man in white clothes and black shoes was going to go down from here. While the companions at the table continued their conversation, the man in white came out of his room and headed downstairs. The man who was just about to go downstairs overheard their conversation and was displeased. The man with the mustache continued the conversation. He said that the man they were talking about was being humiliated by the king. Another man in front of his friend was surprised and asked if this person was really called a king. It was strange to him because he thought that was what they called a novice. They talked about nicknames. These names were given to people in the world of martial arts. They could receive them in honor of their weapons, appearance or fighting skills they used. The men continued their conversation. They knew that there had never been such a case before when a newcomer from Murim was called a king. Hearing his friend's answer, the man with the mustache and beard asked if his friend would like to meet him too. He added that although the listeners have not yet dispersed, the king is already the new star of Murim. The man listened carefully to his friend. He would really like to see this hero. But he still wondered for a moment whether he needed it. The man wanted to answer his friend. It was then that footsteps were heard coming down the stairs. The man, who was going to continue the conversation, also heard these footsteps and became worried. He didn't want anyone to eavesdrop on their conversation. The sound of footsteps from the stairs grew louder in the hall. This was the same man who had heard the conversation of these two comrades. He was going down the stairs. Almost everyone in the hall paid attention to the stomping of his feet. They looked with great interest at his figure, which was not yet fully visible. Seeing the figure of this man in full height, people were pleasantly surprised. The delight in their eyes could be seen with the naked eye. Some man from the hall called this stranger the same king. Of course, he was fascinated like everyone else, and could not think that the king would be here. The man who could not finish his conversation silently looked at the silhouette of the king in full height. He wondered to himself if this man could really be a king. The black figure of the stranger in full height was visible to everyone in the hall. The man was still wondering the same question. Descending the stairs, this mysterious stranger raised his left hand up. She appeared from under his robe slowly and solemnly. He turned to the innkeeper standing behind the counter and asked to bring him something. The cabbie got flustered and quickly decided to bring it to him. The people sitting on the first floor in the hall at the table still could not believe that the king had come down to them. They asked themselves what he asked to bring. The innkeeper hastily got the thing that this noble gentleman asked for. She called him my lord, expressing her sincere and deep respect for him. That thing was a bell. The king took it in his left hand and raised it to the level of his outstretched hand. People looked at this bell and wondered why it was. The strange king made loud noises with these bells. Everyone around was watching it, its purpose was to attract people's attention. All the people in the hall were wildly happy. Only one man did not understand what was happening. People were screaming and going crazy. A friend who was sitting at the table with him explained to the man that when this bell rings, all the food becomes free. The golden king pays for everyone. The man still did not understand anything, he asked himself who the golden king was. A man with a mustache yelled at his desk for people to start yelling his name. People completely agreed with this man and started chanting the name of the golden king. They liked the free food. The king turned to face the people and raised his hand up, greeting everyone present. 
His hand shone like a crystal and looked majestic. His whole majestic figure seemed to sparkle in front of people. People didn't know his name until now. It was the Golden King Kim Sojin, a tavern called Eastern Lake in the middle of the Central Plains. People go crazy, they raise their hands up and shout. They chant the name of Kim Sejun. Once he was an ordinary high school teacher and did not even dream of such recognition. The king stands directly in front of his fans. They continue chanting his nickname. Their group voice grows louder and louder. The teacher was telling his story in the past and stopped himself for a minute. He raised his left arm at shoulder level. The man continued his speech, holding his hand up. People were still chanting his nickname. The man said that he was now known as Kim Sojin the Golden King. With his left hand still raised, the Golden King took the glass of booze in his right hand and, taking his little finger away from the glass, raised it as high as he could. With loud shouts he invited people to drink with him. His big, bushy face was content and gave off only positive emotions at that moment. People were not against drinking at someone else's expense. Having filled the entire space in the hall, they shouted back to the Golden King to pour. Then they started chanting his nickname again. Kim Sejun had been in this town for three weeks, had seen different things and was already used to it. As he assumed, he found himself in the world of martial arts. In a world where anyone can kill you, but in this city, Seo Jun felt safe. He drank a glass of booze, which he had just lifted up without spilling a drop past his mouth. For him, it had already become a routine that he repeated almost every day. His face was joyful and satisfied, literally drowned in emotions. Now he did not worry about anything at all, because he had a pile of gold coins that would last him until the end of his life. He remembered his body. When he looked at his reflection in the river, he looked about sixteen years old. Sejun wondered if he could drink alcohol at all. He thought about this question for a minute. It seemed that he was not joking about this question and that he did not want to break the law. But he remembered that he was not sixteen but thirty-one. He did not see any difference in this. He thought that if anyone started complaining he would just throw his coins at him and laughed. Gold coins opened all kinds of possibilities in this world. While Sejun was enjoying his drink, a stranger came up to him and poured his drink directly on his head. No one expected such a turn of events. All the people, the waiters, who were in the restaurant at that moment, opened their mouths wide and watched. They were shocked that someone would do this to a golden king. The stranger emptied the bottle Sezuna. The last drops of alcohol dripped onto the man's head. Sejun sat with a smile on his face, dripping with booze. A whole squad of warriors, armed to the bone, stood above the golden king. They clearly did not want anything good from him. Sejun continued to sit at his desk. In a not very friendly voice, the man who poured the drink on him began to speak to him. He called him a fat man and asked if he was the same notorious Golden King. It was a bandit group called the Holiday Scientists. Their leader ordered Sojin to give everything he had if he wanted to stay alive. Sejun sat drenched in booze over his glass and paid no attention to potential abusers. There was not a drop of fear in his thoughts. He raised his turn to his mouth, closed his eyes and, with a loud wave of his right hand, drank the alcohol. His expression turned serious for a moment. Drips of booze ran down his lips. Swallowing the last drops of alcohol, I sit and look up. A sinister smile appeared on his face. He simply laughed at his threats. With a loud sound, the leader of the bandit group began to draw his sword from the sheath behind his back. The sword was well sharpened and polished. He brought that sword to the throat of the Golden King, who was still sitting at his table with a glass in hand. There were almost no people left in the hall, they were frightened by such an event. The leader of the bandits did not like that Kim Sejun laughed at him. With a smirk on his face, he called him a bastard and asked if he could even appreciate the situation that was happening to him, implying that he was being robbed. The Golden King did not care about the bandits' threats. He exhaled steam from his mouth and just sat waiting to see what would happen next. The innkeeper came to Sojin in time. She apologized to her master instead of the offender and promised to take him to a place where he would not disturb Sojin. 
The leader of the bandit squad, of course, did not pay any attention to this. He said that it was too late and that his sword would now decide the fate of this place. But the woman did not care about his words in response. With sounds of apology to her master, she pushed the thug towards the exit. The golden king sat at his desk with a smile on his face. The woman continued to push the bandit outside the tavern. Pushing him towards the exit from the inn, she tried to explain to the man that he should get out of here as soon as possible, that he does not know what he is doing and it is very depressing. The bandit was in a complete misunderstanding. With loud screams, the bandit threw the woman away from him, who fell to the floor. He turned to the Golden King with the words that you can't joke with him and why is he putting him out of here anyway. Sejun didn't stop sitting in one place and drinking alcohol. He liked drinking, but he was even more amused by such events every day. The world of martial arts was interesting to him and he laughed at it. He turned to the bandit leader. He advised him to listen to the servants and warned him that this was his last chance to leave the inn peacefully. The bandit was very angry with the Golden King. He did not understand how such a fat man could do him any harm. His face was boiling with anger, he wanted to cut the king to pieces. Suddenly, a loud roar was heard from the second floor of the inn. The floor began to vibrate and particles of building material began to fall from the ceiling. Sojin appeared from the ceiling like a rumble from the sky. He landed with a thud on his feet and his powerful right fist. It happened so quickly that the bandit could not understand what had just happened. His eyes had not yet managed to look behind him, but he already understood that this rumbling did not mean anything good. He was replaced by the skeleton of the young leader of the demonic cycle. His eyes glowed with purple flames. He wanted to take the bandit's brains. The leader of the bandit group had no face. All you could see was the fear in his eyes and his hair standing on end. Sejun tapped his skeleton warrior on the shoulder like he was his best friend. The young leader really was like his best friend in this world. Sejun asked him not to kill the offenders. He wanted to feel sorry for them, because they were just ordinary bandits. His face turned angry, he didn't want to forgive them for pouring the booze on his head. He ordered the young leader to send them straight to hell. The skeleton of the young demonic cult leader heard his master's command. His right eye flashed a blue spark with a loud sound. The young leader rushed to attack the bandit group with the speed of light. The bandits could not do anything and just stood and looked at it with wide open eyes. Sejun stood with a glass of booze in his hands and watched what was happening. There were loud screams from the carnage in the inn, but Sojin didn't care. He drank the last of his drink and let the steam out of his mouth as if with relief. He paid the old man for the food and for the repairs that needed to be done after all this carnage. He thanked the Golden King for such generosity. Seo Jun poured a full pile of gold coins into his hand. With a calm soul and a sense of accomplishment, the judge left the restaurant of the inn. Screams from the carnage still echoed in the hall, the thugs begging to be saved from the young leader's attack but Sejun paid no attention to it. It was already laid outside. Only a couple of buildings were lit in the city, including this tavern. I was thinking about going to bed earlier today. From the outside, the tavern looked as if it would be full of life all night, people would drink and sit here until the morning. A figure of a man in a white robe stood right in front of this store. Under the moonlight, it seemed to glow as brightly as the windows in the inn. She was a young girl with bright black hair that blew in the wind and shone in the moonlight. This girl's name was Dan Seekin, she was sixteen years old and the eldest daughter of the Hansu Dan clan. She had a weapon in her hands, but it made her look even more attractive. The girl was looking at the building in front of her. She finally found what she was looking for, a tavern called East Lake. She walked slowly to the entrance to the tavern. Inexplicable sounds could be heard outside the windows. There were tables and benches at the entrance to the tavern. Opening the front door, the girl entered the tavern, stepping on the threshold with her left foot. She was wearing beautiful white shoes that almost blended in color with the floor in the tavern. Entering the tavern, the girl looked around to see what was happening here. She was a little alarmed by the following events. In front of Dan, the bodies of men lay on the floor in the restaurant lobby. The girl was still standing in the door, not closing it 
surveying the place where she had just entered. She asked aloud what happened here. The servant of the Golden King did not hear how a visitor entered the tavern, raised her eyes and was surprised. She felt uncomfortable in front of the guest because there was a mess on the first floor of the inn. She apologized to the guest for such inconvenience and said that the men here had a little quarrel. Dan Seekin stood in the doorway and listened attentively to the interviewer, who said that this was a common thing in Urima. The cleaner said this while asking questions and laughing. Dan looked at the men lying on the floor. They were making hangover noises. She mentally noted the strength of their livers, and thought that the students of the academies were going in this direction. Noticing that the drunken men on the floor were still alive, she breathed a sigh of relief. The girl simply asked for a room to spend the night. The innkeeper naturally agreed and offered the girl to take her to the room. Dan had a patch on his belt. The woman who was going to take the girl to her room noticed this picture and was very surprised. Dan Seekin noticed the woman's surprise. She glanced in the direction of the taxi driver and was about to say something to her in response to her surprise. Dan asked the servants what was wrong with her appearance, what she was looking at so intently. The woman was flustered and apologized. She looked there unconsciously. The woman's voice trembled. She continued to tell and told Dan that one of the guests of this inn wore the same pattern as hers on his belt. The woman saw the same pattern on the scallop cloak of the young leader. In her imagination, he loomed as clearly as the one hanging on the girl's belt. Sejun kept thinking about the world he had entered. And the more he thought about it, the funnier it became. He thought about what was so special about this world of martial arts. After all, the skeleton warrior he summoned with the same patch on his cloak could take care of everything for him. Sejun stood contentedly with his arm around the shoulder of his summoned warrior. He did not understand whether this was a curse or a blessing for him, because his life was going as well as possible. Sejun remembered the moment when he was burying the gold in his jacket with his students standing over him. After that, they were dragged into a black hole and he was told that whoever disturbed the peace of the king would be cursed. Siajin's face. There, he was asked what kind of blogging the man was talking about. Then another appeared, on which it was assumed that this blessing had already been heard in this world. Sojin, after hearing what was said and reading the inscription on the sign again, did not understand anything and a question flew out of his mouth. This was followed by a sign saying that Kim Sejun is not a resident of Murim. He really wasn't and he got here very recently. After listening and reading these inscriptions, Sojin became even more confused. A question arose in his head, why he was being told and shown all this. A sign appeared in front of Seo Jun again. It said that guests who entered this world without an invitation must be returned to their world. This was called the test protocol. The inscription on the sign was changed, as the wording was inappropriate at the time. Seo Jun still didn't understand anything. He stood holding the young leader's skeleton by his shoulder and asked himself the same question, why would he do this? Another sign told Sojin that the greeting protocol was being initiated. The next one initiated the stages of adaptations for the greeting protocol. Sejun stood there with his mouth wide open and looked at all these plaques. This was followed by stage 1 to 1 of the greeting protocol. Sejun was told to enter an honorary martial arts academy. The final part of this display for Sojin was a sign asking if he wanted to participate in this quest. He had yes or no answer options. Dan Seekin took off the entire sign from her belt and raised it to her chest. It was black and golden in color and glistened in the light. She answered the woman who asked her about this drawing, that it is worn by students who were accepted into the martial arts academy. She added that every student who entered here must wear this sign. The woman was surprised. She was standing right in front of Dan and was looking at this drawing. She knew that the Honorary Academy of Martial Arts is the largest and most famous academy of Murim. The Honorable Martial Arts Academy was where all the clans wanted to send their successors. Better knowledge than here was not given anywhere else in Murima. Dan Seekin stood and thought about the first accepted student, with whom they would be able to go together tomorrow. She looked at the faces of the men lying on the floor. She guessed that this student had beaten them. She didn't know what clan he belonged to, but he spared them. Based on such considerations, the girl concluded that this person is definitely kind and honest. 
He was well trained at the martial arts academy, but it was hard to say that about Sejun, especially with his hysterical laughter. Seo Jun didn't want to join any academy. He stood and talked on the subject with his summoned skeleton. He was going to eat and play all his life, because he had no money at all. After finishing his conversation with the skeleton, Sejun decided it was time to rest as he would be enjoying another nice day tomorrow and collapsed onto his mattress. Sejun was about to fall asleep, but one detail stopped him. He looked straight ahead and saw the same thing again as before. It was a sign with an offer to accept the same quest. Sejun once again wondered what they wanted from him and decided to give it some thought. But before he even had time to think, the sign began to disappear. Seo Jun didn't notice this and silently thought about his needs in this world. In the end, it completely disappeared. Seo Jun never gave an answer to this question, but just watched as the sign disappeared with a pleasant sound. As soon as the inscription disappeared, an urgent warning appeared before Seo Jun's eyes. The inscription was bright red. Seo Jun had never seen this before, so he was in complete shock. He thought that nothing in this world would surprise him anymore, but as it turned out, he was wrong. Next, Sojin saw in front of him many windows on which it was written that he would be punished. The man from the list got up from his bed and did not understand what was happening. He was told that by his actions he rejected this quest. Seo Jun was in complete shock. On the next plate, he was awaited by a class punishment called Curse of the Deceased of Unknown Level. It has been activated. On his face you could see fear and misunderstanding of what was happening. He felt the influence of an unknown force on him and clenched his teeth, trying to understand at least something. His hands began to ache excruciatingly. He looked at his hand, the skin from which was peeling off at a maddening speed. Sojin had no face at that moment. He felt the same emotions when he and you fell into the unknown cave. It was dark, scary and painful. The sounds in his head made him feel the same emotions as at that moment. He disturbed the peace of the king and will be punished. Sejun writhed and screamed in pain. He was sitting on the edge of his bed, tears escaping from his eyes from hopelessness. The voice in his head repeated that he had disturbed the peace of the king. A curse awaited Nisaju, which he could not even think about. The pain only intensified. Sejun was going crazy because of him, his eyes could let out a river of tears from such a thing. His scream was so loud that the whole inn could be woken up by it. His face began to evaporate. He fell to his knees from the bed with a thud and couldn't do anything about the pain the procedure was causing him. He collapsed completely on the floor from this excruciating pain. An inexplicable steam was coming from his body, and Seo Jun was only able to make inexplicable noises. He forced himself to climb to the shelf in the room, which was a couple of meters ahead of him. He put his hand on this shelf. The skin completely peeled off this hand and the sound he made when he put his hand on the support was unbearable even for Seo Jun himself. Sweat dripped from his face, and his body steamed. He could not think about anything at that moment because of the pain caused by an unknown force. An unknown voice was forcing him to do something he hadn't yet imagined. In front of his eyes were already dim yellow plates, and letters with black dark illumination. Sejun tried his best to hold back this excruciating pain. But no matter how hard he tried, the unknown force was stronger than him. He began to cough loudly in pain. The man raised his head to the mirror that hung above this shelf. He calmed down for a moment and expected to see his normal self in the mirror. What Sejun saw in the mirror made him cry out loud. He couldn't believe what he was seeing right in front of him and just screamed. The skin had already begun to slip from his face. Liquid evaporated from the whole body. He began to turn into a skeleton, and an unknown voice told him that he would spend his whole life, until his last days, among the dead. 